Hello friends, I hope everybody's doing well. Okay, so today we have my friend Joe's, it's a paddle sweeper, I would imagine. And I don't know, about four weeks ago he asked me if I wanted to uh, put a carburetor on and he ordered a carburetor. I don't know what company he ordered it from, I'll see if there's any paperwork in the box there. Because he had to take to the handlebar and it looks like the tag ripped off a little bit there. So, um... I believe he said that the throttle was sticking, but I'm not quite sure what he meant by that. So he just, for 18 bucks, he just ordered a new carburetor for it. So right now, I want to try to start it up and see what it's doing. Um, and then we'll get it on the bench, and then we'll open the box and see what they gave us as far as the uh, carburetor goes. With the, he said there was fuel lines in there. To, I'm just going to start priming it here. seems to be good and there is gas in it it's a two-stroke and it's a steel but I don't have any numbers off it yet I don't know exactly what model it is or anything like that so for now let's just try to start it up and see what happens here with it um, seems to be really short. I think he said it started. Let me get it some throttle, maybe. The throttle seems to be working, okay? Like somebody punctured the spark plug boot. I don't know if it's all the way through or not. All right, let me uh, pull the spark plug out and see what we got in there right now. I want to make sure it runs before we do anything. Okay, guys, I had the uh, on and off switch uh, on the off position, so I doubted it would have ever started. I caught that before I even bothered to pull the spark plug out. So let's see if we can get something out of it now. Give it some throttle. I might have flooded it by now. Still doesn't want to do anything. Right, there we go. First problem. All right, I'll get back to you. I don't know if I may have some pull cord I'd stick in there. I don't know, but there we go. We're at it. Told you the pull cart cord was too short, so I was waiting for that to happen. So I guess we'll be putting a pull cord in it too. All right, so everything seems to be pretty rusty here. What I did was I just wiggled the spark plug boot, and I got the boot off. But now I got to get the uh, the metal piece off here, and I have to be careful not to break that. So I'm gonna have to start spraying everything up. These bolts in here to hold this cover on for the recoiler, that's rusty. So. Give that a nice little uh, spray down here. Let's see if I can pop that off with the uh, screwdriver maybe. I try not to break the spark plug too if I could help it. It's just a rust bucket. We'll give it a little wiggle wiggle with the needle nose here to see where you get that to come off without breaking anything here. It's 
really. I'll let that soak a few minutes. For now, I'll take off the, uh, this handle's kind of in the way, so I'll pull that handle off here. I think you can kind of see what I'm doing. There, up there. Might have been easier to just work on this on the ground for uh, filming purposes. Wow, that's stuck. I got a feeling everything's going to be stuck on this thing. I have a funny feeling. All right, let's forget about this for a minute. Now I'll take this handle off here and get that out of, out of the way. I don't know if that's 10 millimeter or 12. Might be 12 or 10 or something. Nope. I think it's 10. Nah, that don't fit either. Let me get back to you because one thing I hate doing is trying to fumble around for tools when I'm recording. So I'll be right back. Okay, so these are Torx. You can't get a socket on here. I took a better look at it. And I had a hard time loosening these. I just hit... I sprayed it with WD and I just hit this with a hammer and then they busted loose. And I think I'm going to have to take this bracket off too. Now what else is holding this thing on? I'm not a fan of this thing already. holding this. Maybe it's just stuck, busted, I don't know. There we go. I just want to slide that thing out of the way if I could. Um, let me get this thing out of the way too here. I know what it's going to be. It's going to be take everything apart to get this apart. Now I got to loosen this nut, I guess, here. that to let's see if this handle could come down and slam the uh, camera here That don't do any good. Uh, I got two more I gotta loosen here. Let me just get that bracket out of the way and I gotta try to slide this handle back so we can get, gain access to the cover. Sorry about the wind. If it's not the wind, it's the snow, it's the rain, it's the, you know, whatever. So, I ended this on the bottom here, if you can see it. So, 
I took the two bolts out of the handle here and I just pushed it back as far as I could. And I had a real hard time getting these Torx bolts out. I sprayed them with WD, hit them with a hammer. One of them, I had to use the next size up Torx because it actually stripped out, but I was able to get that out. And now, right now, is I have to take this uh, air filter housing off here because there's a bolt that goes in the side here that's holding the cover from coming off. The bolt move, move, this bolt moves a little bit, but not much. It's already loose, but it's seized. So, nightmare. That's what we got here. That's why I, I stay away from two strokes at all costs. I'm not crazy about them at all. Some guys have good luck with them. I don't. Every one I do is a nightmare. Every single one. Okay, so. Might as well take the carburetor off now to see how this is here. I don't know if it broke. Or something's holding it. I don't know what's going on here. Or it's just suspended by rubber. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, it must be just suspended by rubber. Let's just get this thing off here. I don't know, it looks like it's got some kind of crazy screw in there. Hold in it. Alright, there's one grommet. Then there was another grommet I just took out. It probably goes up here. So we don't want, really don't want to lose these grommets. Let's see if I can just press it back on here. I'll press the other one back on. Okay, so we got, oh no. We got this off. I don't know if this broke or what. It's unbelievable this. I'll be back. Okay, so that piece I said oh no about right here, it's no big deal. Um, this is the gas tank support. And what you're supposed to do is when I put this cover back on, after we put the new uh, starter rope in, um, as soon as I tighten up the cover, this will be tight on there, and then I can screw the gas tank back on here. So that's not a big deal. So I'm going to get set up now, and we'll put the new rope in here. I have to find a place over here to work. Um, I'll be right back to you. Okay, so make sure there's no um, tension on your recoiler here, which there isn't. And I just got the uh, old rope out. Uh, I could have done it easier if I... I got to pop this clip off here, and I have to take this plastic piece off here. And just make sure to recoil or the, it, usually when it has tension on it you go to pull this off it'll pop the uh, coil spring in there we don't want to do that so let me see if I can get you in a position where I could pop off that clip here we'll pull this thing off I'll try to feed the uh, new rope in there see I just pulled this off here this clip and I did take a picture of it to make sure I put it back on there the way I took it off. So, I'll just put this off to the side here. And then you have this piece here. You want to make sure you don't lose that. And I really should mark where it goes. Because there's like two, 
two places where you could put this back in. And I don't know if it matters if I... Let me see if I could put a mark on that for a second. Okay, so I just took my Sharpie and just put a mark here where this goes back in. On this side. Yeah, I, I suppose if you put it on the other side, it doesn't matter either. But this only has one in it, so... Okay, so... I'll pop that plastic piece out. Make sure you're somewhat in view here. And then there's a real skinny little washer that you got to make sure you put back into here. So we just pop that out like so. And let me see now if I could run that the new rope in here. I don't know if it's going to be skinny enough. I don't know. I might have to uh, take my lighter and put a point on this. I don't know yet. If I could even see where this... Yeah, I'm going to have to put a point on the rope here to get it into the hole here, I think. This is pretty skinny rope here. It should fit. It should work. I'll compare it to the old rope. Now, maybe thinner. Maybe it should have been thinner than that. I don't have anything any thinner than this. So, I don't know if this is going to work. So, let me see if I can get, up, get it up through there. Okay, so I took a drill bit. A real small one. About the size of this. Just a hair bigger. And I was able to get the rope through there. And I don't suggest doing that. I would just buy the right rope for it. It's probably the next size down from this. So let me see if I can uh, get this to feed in there somehow. Okay, so taking a picture of this, how the clip and that piece went in, helped a great deal. Because I, I kind of for, forgot how it went. And when you turn it backwards, you want this black piece to flex out as you could see so your attention on the spring is going to be when you turn this counterclockwise so what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to put the rope into the notch here and coil up the spring as far as I can and then I'm going to feed the rope through where the heck is it oh yeah right down here after I coil it up real good, I'm going to feed the rope through the hole here so it comes out the casing where the handle goes on. And then I'll get right back to you on that. And I think we're only going to do the video on uh, changing the rope on the recoiler for today. Okay, so this had a pretty tough spring in here. So what I did was I took my noodle nose pliers and stuck it in here. And I just kept spinning it and spinning it. Because I thought I had it all the way because the spring was so tight. But then there was hardly any uh, pull. And now we got all this pull here. And because I used a bigger rope, just make sure that the rope stays in the spool. And doesn't overlap here because then the rope could pop out of the spool here. So, I, got, I don't know if it would have just been best to buy a brand new uh, recoiler system for it. But I was able to do it. And we're going to end this one here. Uh, this was supposed to be about the carburetor, but then we had this issue here with the starter rope breaking. So, um, I hope you all enjoyed it and you got something out of it. And thanks for watching, and I'll see you all on the next one, and stay safe.